Here I'm going to go through how to propagate error in IB calculations. Now this is the way that I do it, and so if you're in a different class, your teacher may show you a couple different things, and that's, that's typical. There are a couple different ways to kind of manage this. This is the one I find to be the simplest, and so this will work, uh, but you do want to be consistent with what your teacher says. So first of all, assigning error, what I, what I do is I just take the final sig fig, and then I add a plus or minus of 0.1 of that value. Or, or of, you know, one place of that. Okay, so, so if my final sig fig was in the ones place, then I would say plus or minus one. If my final sig fig is in the tens place, then I would say plus or minus ten. Okay, but the more difficult thing is what do you do when you're doing a calculation? So adding and subtracting uh, is one thing, and then multiplying and dividing is another. So when you add or subtract, then kind of what you want to do is you want to make it where this range makes sense. So this 2.4 plus or minus 0.1 really means that my answer is somewhere between 2.3 and 2.5 probably. Okay, And so what I want to do is I want to keep that honest with respect to my calculation. The way you do that is you just combine the two errors. Okay, So if this can be off by 0.1 and this can be off by 0.1, then the answer can be off by 0.2. Now if we do that with ranges, we have 3.2 to 3.4, and, and then, of course, we have 2.3 to 2.5. So if I take the minimums of that, I get 2.3 plus 3.2, that's 5.5. And 2.5 plus 3.4 is my upper end of that range, 5.9. So the extremes of that lead me to this, which according to my answer is perfect, 5.7 plus or minus 0 0.2, 5.5 to 5.9. So for adding and subtracting, all you do is you just combine the two different errors. Okay? Subtracting, you do add them together uh, because they can both be off by that amount. Now multiplying and dividing is not quite as simple. So multiplying and dividing, we need, we need to keep our ranges honest. And the way you do that is you compare the error with the value in terms of a percentage. So here I have 2 plus or minus 0.01 times 4 plus or minus 0 0.01, 8 is my answer, 2 times 4. Okay, but what do I do with these, with these uncertainties? What you do is you take 0 0.01 and divide it by the value of 2, and then I change that into a percentage. Okay, so this one happens to be 0.5%. Okay, and then the other one is 0 0.01 divided by 4, that happens to be 0.25%. Now that's as a percent, so it's 0 0.005 and 0 0.0025. For your final answer, you add those two together, so now I would end up with 0.75% for my final answer. Now my final answer is 8. Okay, so to get my final answer, what I would do is I would take this 0 0.0075 times 8, and then I would use that as my range. And so that comes up to 0 0.06 when I do that. So my final answer is 8 plus or minus 0 0.06 centimeters squared. Okay. Now what I want to do then is I want to go through and I want to look at the ranges on that to make sure that that kind of works. So my range was 2 plus or minus 0 0.01 and 4 plus or minus 0 0.01. So the smallest values I can get on that are here, 0.01 below and 0.01 below. If I have the smallest two values and I multiply them, that ends up to being 7.94. If I have the largest values possible, 2.01 and 4.01, and I multiply those, that comes out to be 8.06. Okay, well that's perfect. If I go back to my answer, it was 8.00 plus or minus 0 0.06 centimeters squared. And so we can see that this process that we're doing works for what we're, what we're ending up with. Now there is some rounding to this, but, but that's essentially the way that I would do these. Dividing would work the exact same. You would add the uncertainties and then apply them towards your final answer, and that would set you up for what your error would be.